all saw the blind side. I mean, it's like millions of people have seen the blind side and enjoyed the story. Um, I confess I didn't know that it was just one long racist trope, as now I'm learning from places like Salon and Slate. Um, you're racist too if you enjoyed it. Um, it's about the white saviors. That's why you're not allowed to like the blind side. Uh, but as it turns out, it's not just Slate that didn't like the blind side. Michael Orr did not like the blind side. Uh, the young man who's featured in it and whose life story is portrayed in both the book uh, by Michael Lewis and then the movie that was based on the book. So just as a refresher, in that movie, the Tui family, which is important to note, was already very wealthy. Uh, they had made millions off of uh, fast food chains. They owned like Taco Bells and some other ones. Um, decided to take in Michael Orr, who was from, to put it charitably, a broken family uh, and was in foster care, and to become his legal guardians. Um, and the, the nature of that relationship will become relevant in the dispute that we're now going to talk about. Uh, and helped him, and he played football, and he wound up getting drafted. He went to the NFL. And um, it seemed like a loving, wonderful story up until about two minutes ago when Michael Orr came out and started ripping on the family and is now actually going after them. So he uh, I, he also released a book this month, just, just so people understand. Um, but in, in the context of that as well, he's commenced a petition in probate court where uh, he is claiming that, in fact, he was tricked into signing a document making the Tuies his conservators, not his adoptive family. And that gave them legal authority to make business deals in his name. But he complains that he never received any sort of payments for the blind side and that uh, to his chagrin and embarrassment, uh, he was lied to by the Tuies. They've enriched themselves at his expense uh, and that he wants something like hundreds of thousands of dollars from them in, and maybe more actually, that he says that they received millions of dollars and he received nothing for the rights to his story. Uh, the two ways are denying it, Jason, saying really none of this is true. He, he was well aware of the nature of the legal relationship, that it was a conservatorship, it wasn't an adoption, he was over 18, and that they split the monies from the blind side five ways, evenly amongst their family, and that they continue to love him. And they seem rather confused about what he's doing here. So what's your take on it? Well, I think that Michael Orr's uh, own words written in his own memoir in 2011 contradict a great deal of this narrative. Uh, he And I, I've read his 2011 book, I Beat the Odds. I've reread The Blind Side. I've rewatched the movie, The Blind Side. I've watched the interviews he's done. And so in 2011, he wrote in his own book that they had entered into a conservatorship and that he didn't really care because all it meant was that he knew he was a part of their family. And so to now come out in 2023 and pretend like you're just discovering, I wasn't adopted, I'm in a conservatorship, it's just a flat out lie. It, it's dishonest. And so I think a lot of this, 90% of it, 98% of it, maybe 100% of it, is all driven by the fact that Michael Orr is at a crossroads. He's been out of the NFL for five, six, seven years. Uh, he's 37 years old. Uh, I think he's written in his new memoir that just came out in the past two, two or three weeks that, you know, he struggled with job and career and depression. And so I, I think this petition is part of a publicity campaign for his new book mm. and part of a campaign that he would love to see a Netflix or Amazon Prime or some uh, movie studio out in Hollywood commission a sequel to The Blind Side, The Real Blind Side, the, the new Michael Orr. And he wants to profit from that. He wants to sell his book. And he wants to negotiate a, a better movie deal that makes him the, the champion and, and more of the hero of The Blind Side than he thinks the book and or a movie made of him. Uh, th this is just uh, a frustrated former athlete 
uh, doing something I believe very unethical to enrich himself and to enhance his brand. It's sad. Mm, that's so fascinating. So you're right about the book. Um, in 2011, his memoir, I Beat the Odds, he writes that the two he's told him about the legal conservatorship. And he writes, quote, since I was already over the age of 18 and considered an adult by the state of Tennessee, Sean and Leanne would be named as my, quote, legal conservators. They explained to me that it pretty much means the exact same thing as adoptive parents, but that the laws were just written in a way that took my age into account. Honestly, I didn't care what it was called. My mother was going to be at the hearing to agree that she supported the decision to have the Tuies listed as my next of kin and legal conservators, legal conservators. Um, but now he's claiming he didn't understand that, he didn't know that, he thought he was adopted. Okay, so that that's clearly not true. Um, the Tuies have hired the illegal gunslinger out in Hollywood named Marty Singer, who you hire him when, you know, you really want to fight. He represents all these celebrities who are, they sue for defamation, et cetera. And he put out a statement, which I'll, on, on their behalf, which I'll read just in part. He writes, the notion that a couple worth hundreds of millions would connive to withhold a few hundred thousand or a few thousand dollars in profit participation payments from anyone, let alone from someone they loved as a son, defies belief. In reality, the Tuies opened their home to Mr. Orr, offered him structure, support, and most of all, unconditional love. They have consistently treated him like a son and one of their three children. His response was to threaten them, including saying that he would plant a negative story about them in the press unless they paid him $15 million. The evidence documented in profit participation checks and studio accounting statements is clear. <clears throat> Over the years, the Tuies have given Mr. Orr an equal cut of every penny received from the blind side, even recently when Mr. Orr started to threaten them about what he would do unless they paid him an eight-figure windfall and as part of that shakedown effort refused to cash the small profit checks the Tuies gave to him, they still deposited Mr. Orr's equal share into a trust account they set up for him. Uh, and goes on and on from there. He's defiant. He maintains these are bad people who really didn't help him as much as the movie portrayed. Here's a little bit of that uh, when he gave an interview on August 14th to the Jim Rome show, Sot 11. I think the biggest for me is, you know, being portrayed, uh, not being able to read or write. Uh, second grade, I was doing plays and for in front of the school. And I, I think that's one of the, when you go into a locker room and your teammates don't think that you can learn a playbook, you know, that weighs heavy uh, on someone. Before I moved in with the family, I was an All-American. That's what I want the generations behind me to see in this book right here, to understand that you don't have to come have someone save you and rescue you to go out and be successful. You I said, playing right into this white savior thing, you know, like that they're, they're not they're not my saviors. I did it all on my own. Listen, the in his book, I beat the odds. He states very clearly that he didn't like the movie, but that he liked the book, The Blind Side, and that's what made me go, okay, well, let me go reread The Blind Side to refresh my memory, and 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 so. If he, there's no way you can like the book, The Blind Side, and then have a problem with the movie. The, the book is far more descriptive and detailed about the struggles that Michael Orr faced when he moved into the Tui's home. He's, according to this book that he says he likes and all the provable facts, he moved into the Tui's home, I believe, in February of 2004. He was not an All-American football player at that time. He had played one year of football the year before. They played him on the defensive line that year. The coach didn't really know what to do with him. He wasn't all that aggressive. And when he moved in with them in February 2004, Michael Orr thought he was going to be a basketball player. He's six foot five, 300 and some odd pounds at that time. And, and Sean Tui, the dad, in February, he's writing small colleges, trying to get Kashan Tui's background as basketball. He was a point guard at Ole Miss. He's trying to get small colleges to recruit 
this six foot five, three hundred pound kid to see if he can play small college basketball. No one, the Tuies, when they moved him in permanently into their home, they weren't thinking this was some future NFL player that was going to be worth millions of dollars. They thought they had a kid who needed help just to get his life on the right path. These are all verifiable facts recovered in the blind side. This whole notion that I was an All-American before I moved in, this notion, again, he's very careful with his wording. Oh, they said I couldn't read. Then he says, I was doing plays in the second grade. He didn't say I was reading in the second grade. He's saying I was doing plays in the second grade. If you read the blind side, the Tuies, when they moved him in, and even before they moved him in, he could not read and he'd have to do book reports. And so Sean and Leanne would spend nights reading aloud books to him so that he could do book reports. They hired a tutor, Miss Sue, to, to help catch him up. When he moved in with them, I think his GPA, according to the book, was a .06. And this is a, a junior in high school, a .06. His IQ was at an 80. The GPA, the IQ level, none of them would have qualified him to get into this Briarcrest school, this private Christian school. Look, he couldn't read. They had to read to him. They invested a lot of time, money, and energy trying to catch Michael back up because Michael had been so neglected by his mother, who was addicted to crack cocaine, had no real relationship with his father, who I believe was in and out of jail and then eventually died, I think, when Michael was 17, 18, 19 years old. He, he had been abandoned by his father. Basically, he and his 11 siblings used to routinely come home, find the door locked because their mother was going on a crack cocaine binge with her friends. And so she would lock them out of the house. She would be someplace else on this cocaine binge. And they would they came to expect, well, this is going to happen every couple, two or three months. She's going to go on a cocaine binge and we're going to have to go sleep on a friend's floor and beg for food and all of a sudden. This young man had been so neglected that by the time the Briarcrest Christian School, the Tuies, and other members of that school administration got a hold of him. He had been so neglected that, that it was a total reclamation project that the entire school and the Tuies went on out of their Christian beliefs. Back to school is here, but sadly, there's one subject that is rarely discussed, and that's money. Millions of kids and teens eventually graduate completely unprepared for the financial decisions awaiting them. Schools are not teaching it. Imagine if you started saving and investing when you were 10. You could have been buying Apple stock at a few dollars per share. And it's not just investing. We need to actively teach our kids about earning and saving. So parents, listen up. We have a new sponsor called Busy Kid, a super easy to use app designed to empower your children with financial literacy and responsibility. Parents pay allowance to their kids for chores and then the kids get to manage their money in different buckets savings, spending, investing, and giving. Your kids even get their own debit card tied to their Busy Kid account. Do your kids a favor and provide the head start they will need. Busy Kid is offering a limited time special that's 20% off an annual subscription, so less than $4 a month. Go to busykid.com for more details or just download the app and use our promo code MK for 20% off your order. Busykid.com promo code MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.